much for having me here. I'm really excited to tell you about my latest project. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I'm here to talk to you guys today about Prisma. Um, I'm going to try to move through this pretty quickly so that we can leave time for questions for all the other uh, wonderful presentations that came before. Um, so I apologize for any brevity. Um, I love talking about this, so please try to connect with me afterwards uh, if you'd like to know more. Uh, but essentially, um, I'll just do a quick, quick introduction. Um, my kind of foray into open hardware and open hardware for science started with open ROV. Uh, about a decade ago, I think some of you might know David Lang, and um, I saw Andrew, uh, Dr. Th ADT as we call him, Andrew David Thaler's here, so uh, pleasure to be in your company. Um, and one of the things that you'll notice is a, is a kind of common thread throughout this uh, presentation and others is that we're trying to democratize things, make things more accessible, but also it's really difficult in the space, uh, the maritime space. Um, and so this is uh, along those same lines. Uh, I work at SOFAR currently, and SOFAR uh, develops ocean weather buoys. Uh, it's a commercial for-profit company, and uh, we've been using this, uh, in this essentially this communication protocol, this standard, uh, internally for years. And it was originally developed uh, at OpenRV, and we decided to open it, try to get the word out about it. Um, we launched in June, so it's very new, so feedback appreciated. Um, essentially, uh, the Kind of the impetus for companies like SoFar and OpenRV is that we just have too much data that we need and not enough time to do it. Um, we like to start our, a lot of our presentations at SoFar with a quote here from Walter Monk, uh, the famous oceanographer. Um, indeed, the first hundred years of oceanography is, and we still are in actually, um, a century of undersampling. We're just not taking enough data, um, gathering enough data uh, in, in a meaningful way. And uh, essentially, scaling is the challenge. Doing this at scale is really where this, you know, falls apart. Um, one of the reasons scale is difficult is because uh, putting things together uh, in the ocean is very, very difficult. Um, it, there's just anyone who works in the ocean space is kind of like already familiar with what you see here on the right side of the screen. Um, th these are all the wet connectors that you can buy for a few hundred dollars that uh, are necessary in order to make a payload um, similar to some of the early slides shown, um, you know, with those larger CTD systems or ROVs or really anything. Um, it's more than just the connectors, though. It's just really a, a wild, tangled world of different protocols, different voltages. Uh, sometimes, um, just give you a really quick story, uh, the little connector on the right with six pins. I have two devices. I have a multi-parameter sonde and, and a pressure sensor at my office. They both have that connector. But if you swap them out, they will break because they have different pinouts and different voltages, which is just insane to me. Um, so here's the elevator pitch. Why can't it be, why can't it be this simple, right? Um, there's some good reasons for that and some bad reasons for that. But this is kind of the 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 very high level vision that we'd go we'd like to go for. We'd like you to be able to plug something in like a computer peripheral. I mean, imagine if your computer mouse came with like a twisted pair or like a flying lead copper wires that you had to solder and you had to go download the data sheet. I mean, it's just crazy, right? Um, that's how it is in the marine space. That's how folks that you've heard from today. Uh, deal with this every day. Like that's our job that we get paid to like take the wires apart, read the data sheets, connect them, make sure the voltages are right, look at the sample data, write some code. I mean, it's just, it really, it's all consuming. Um, so we, before we set on this journey, we needed to build a bit of a, a coalition to, to make this public. So we went uh, to a couple of funding groups um, and we've gotten uh, some early funding uh, from the folks you see here and some partnerships uh, as well. Um, and we've named it bristlemouth. We've named it after the most numerous vertebrate in the ocean. And uh, they are everywhere. They're the backbone of some of these deep water um, kind of food webs, uh, but we don't really know them. And so that's kind of what we hope for bristlemouth too, that it's everywhere, but it's kind of working behind the scenes and, and making things uh, connect. Uh, I mentioned earlier, like, well, okay, so that's, that sounds great, but like, 
why isn't there a standard already? Well, there are there are there are some standards out there like SDI twelve, um, and there are some connectorization standards, but there's really nothing very widespread. And there's a few really good reasons for that. One, the ocean is super tough on hardware. There's a ton of different devices and you know data packages that are needed, and the industry is really siloed. Um, I think the third one is the not good reason. Um, the ocean is, if you haven't worked in it, it's really humbling. Uh, there are little critters that try to eat your projects. And uh, I met somebody that had octopus uh, that like to open their, their waterproof enclosures. Uh, it's really, really expensive and hard to get out there. So you really got to make it count. Not everybody can just you know charter a research vessel. Um, the saltwater tries to destroy everything and create short circuits. And then on top of that, it's just an incredibly dynamic environment with some tremendous power uh, behind it. Um, our solution to that, you know, we, we said, hey, if we got to make a standard, we need to solve everything at these levels. So we've built a physical layer. Um, we've made these waterproof connectors that are, you know, tens of dollars, uh, well, dollars to make and tens of dollars to sell, essentially, um, that we hope can go full ocean depth. I think we've rated them to 300 meters, uh, but they're dead simple, very few moving parts, uh, no moving parts on the jumpers, and you can just drill a through hole. You don't need to um, necessarily pot everything or backfill anything, which can really expedite the speed at which you can do a penetration or a, a, a wet connection. Um, we can go dozens of meters on the jumpers and hundreds of meters uh, up to, I think, uh, about two or three kilometers, given your data rates on the uh, larger cabling. Uh, there's a ton of different devices. Like Because it's hard to get out there, um, you'll notice that oceanographic equipment, beyond being expensive, is complex, mostly because of all the different things that, that needs to measure. I mean, it's everything from cameras to solar panels to batteries. Uh, for vehicles, it's thrusters. I mean, all these different devices have massively different requirements for the types of uh, data and the types of power that you need. Um, and so that's another reason why a standard hasn't been widely adopted. Um, Bristol Mouth hopes to solve that by kind of creating um, this electrical scheme over top of the physical layer that allows for data over two line. Uh, so we, we, it's essentially um, Ethernet over power line is, is the, the kind of underlying technology there. Um, and we've also built a network stack around that that allows you to kind of uh, choose which layer to engage in order to connect something. So you can connect something on a very low level, like serial connection, or you can uh, use some of the middleware to uh, connect more advanced devices all the way up to Ethernet. So it works under you know the standard IP uh, v6 um, protocol. So that if you already have networking devices set up, then you can engage on that level. And so we can kind of hopefully rise to meet um, the different requirements for different devices. Well, so the kind of not good reason why things are hard in the underwater space is the industry is silent. There's a ton of um, big companies out there that make a lot of money, uh, you know, servicing defense or oil and gas, and they're not really interested in, you know, kind of sharing or just putting extra resources up in order to kind of, you know, open their um, protocols that are used for other companies. Um, they have sometimes some very specific niche reasons for doing this. So it's not always bad. It's just, just kind of the way it's developed and the way that money has flown from funding organizations and you know, kind of in industrial investment uh, down into the, the space. Um, so I won't belabor this point. Usually when I give this presentation, I spend a lot of time here, but I feel like everyone in this kind of understands the power of open hardware and the power of uh, sharing. And so uh, in, in a similar vein to everyone else that has spoken today, we really want to try to make everything as open as possible. Uh, we want to encourage other people that are building on the platform or on the protocol to also uh, open uh, source everything that they're doing and kind of uh, act as an accelerant. Um, I can imagine a world, um, you know, a real life application of this could really be um, so far, buoys are bristle mouth enabled. I hope someday um, the open someday soon the open CTD uh, will as well. And you can imagine just being able to plug that into the uh, spotter buoy and have it just work. And hopefully, there's some other uh, platforms out there where, um, if you needed real time, you could just just kind of skip that whole part of the development and utilize some of the other systems that are out there. And then hopefully, all that code's available on the forum or on a forum. Uh, or on a wiki somewhere or something like that. So we're, we're hoping to kind of leverage some of the existing uh, frameworks that are out there. We hope to engage with other groups that are out there and we hope you guys will kind of join us for this and 
help us steer this whole thing. Um, to that end, uh, we have just launched in June. This is brand new. Um, one of the things you may have noticed is like, okay, if it's a standard, everyone's got to agree on that and use it, right? So how do you get there? So we're hoping to kind of kickstart things with uh, uh, a number of startups, universities, nonprofits, and other groups, um, hopefully many of you as well will join us for this, uh, to get free developer kits and so far hardware to, to begin building new products or testing new integrations and things like that. Uh, it's been really, really successful. I think we're, we're about halfway through that commitment now. Um, we are hoping this would last till the summer of next year, but it looks like we'll probably stop taking applications or maybe go get some more funding to kind of continue things. But um, that's kind of my call to action today and you know where I kind of want to end it. I hope I haven't gone too far. I'm going to check the time. I'm a little, little, little over there, so I'm going to just end it here. But um, yeah, if you guys will uh, uh, take an opportunity to look at the Pioneer program, um, we have still some free kits to give out. Um, if you want to come uh, hang out with us and other open source uh, marine hardware enthusiasts, we're hosting an event in San Francisco uh, November 9 and 10, and you can always find me on the forum. Thank you so, so, so much for your time. <laughs>